Hello? Okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Irwin. Um, anyway, I've had a pro real problem with authority. Always have. Uh, I didn't say that, Lou Reed did. But I'd like, uh, I'm prefacing my talk today with that quote. Because I want, one thing I want to tell you today is, I don't want anything I say you shouldn't necessarily believe. <laughs> no, not anyone on this stage. And why would you? I'm male, I'm slightly older than everyone here, and I'm wearing a suit. I'm on the stage and you've been told to listen to me. I'm my own version. If I were you, I would have a problem with me too. I look like an authority figure. But anyway, and anything I say would be received as wisdom, fact, or doctrine. And usually that's the case. But I tell you, don't. You can listen first, yes, but accept easily, no. Especially, um, especially when you're purported. Uh, uh, I, I've been working in film, music, and print. And there are no shortage of people telling you what to do in these fields. And, uh, and I'm telling you, no one knows anything. No one knows anything. Uh, uh, in, in, in the scientific process, I think um, it's, 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 it's the usual practice to reconsider theories that you've had um, in the when new findings come to light. Um, and um, it's always uh, important to check yourself against confirmation bias, which means that uh, you check if you're looking at data and just looking at what you want to believe. Uh, in, my, in my fields, um, that rarely is the practice. But you won't, but if you think you're not going to get anyone telling you what to do and how you should do it in film, music, or print, or any of the creative arts as they call them, you're really not gonna, you're not gonna have find a shortage of people to tell you that. Um, uh, I, I, think, I think what I wanna say is that um, there are people, when you enter anything, will tell you, this is how you make a blockbuster film, this is how you make a hit single, and this is how you get a best-selling issue of a magazine. I'll start by telling you, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. When I started working in magazines, in the early 2000s, uh, they, they, my editor-in-chief and I were discussing that there was a rule before that on covers that you could never use even numbers as cover text and never the color green. Uh, the thing is, uh, when you ask people why that was, no one could really tell you why. But this is in practice not just here. This is, uh, this is, this is a practice since the 60s and it's from abroad. That's why you rarely, rarely, you rarely, it, it, you rarely, it's always seven ways to make your vagina roar. <laughs> and in, back in the 2000s, Giselle Tonji would never wear a green dress. But, but the thing is, there's really no one knows why these things are, but they were accepted wisdom at the time, and then they've flouted ever since. But in 2006, the American Society of Magazine Editors awarded Best Salon Celebrity Cover to Harper's Bazaar. On that cover was actress Julianne Moore and she was wearing green. Commenting on that award, the New York Times noted that using green has traditionally been poison on the newsstand. In my own career as a magazine editor, I was the founding ch editor chief of Esquire Philippines. I resigned last December. Um, I've published covers that use green and they sold very well, but I've never used numbers for cover lines because I always thought that was kind of cheap. Um, in other fields, like in 2014, I co-wrote and co-produced two tracks by the Eraserheads. And um, during the recording process, I, there was a debate on how, how, what is the ideal length for a hit song, for a pop song. And um, it happens to be that there are science and apparently some research has been done into it. And it's 2 minutes 42 seconds. When they say research, it's probably somebody looking at their iTunes and checking out their favorite songs. Because apparently, like, this charming man by the Smiths, the last, there she goes, that's two minutes, 42 seconds. But, of course, we can take it seriously because this is the Razorheads and their biggest hit, Ang Huling El Bimbo, is over seven minutes long. 
uh, recently I've been working with film, and um, Lav Diaz, perhaps the most important and most celebrated uh, director in Filipino director in, in the world today, he, he, he makes films that are longer than accepted by Hollywood, three hour limit. I mean, it's two hours, but if you're reading really an epic, if you're doing Gladiator, it's going to be three hours. Um, we did a movie together recently, as, as we've mentioned, and that was eight hours. And, um, but you know, the thing is, the head of the jury, Meryl Streep, she came up to us and she said it was such a privilege to be able to be immersed on with the, looking at the human face for that long. And back then, I mean, I met Lav in 1999, and he made his first long film, Five Hours, Batang West Side in 2000. But we had a conversation once because everyone told him we should never do the films he does. Plus, you know, I mean, no producer, no producer would really, no producer, no film program, no critic said that Fil Filipino or even foreign audience could take his films. So I asked him in 2001, I remember the conversation very clearly, I asked him, do you think we're ready? And he said, well, if we don't do it now, we never will be. I couldn't agree more because if it's anything I've learned, it's the worst thing is to underestimate or to curb potential. That's what accepting what we're told by those in authority will always do because that's where they want to keep us. They don't, it's, it's, not, it's not what, the, it, 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 they never want us to be better than them or better than ourselves. So, the, so my, my point here today is, don't take my word for it either. Forget all that. Fight the power and find out for yourself.